You're watching the FirearmsChannel.com. Hi, I'm Max Martin for the Firearms Channel, and here with me today is Trey Hicks from Dillon Arrow. We're going to talk minigun. Today, we have traveled to a secret destination deep in the hot Sonoran Desert to get an up close look at a deadly accurate weapon that strikes terrible fear and dread in the hearts and minds of all those who end up on the business end of this extreme weapon known as the Dillon Arrow M134D minigun. If you look at the bigger guns on a lot of the fighter aircraft, and then they were huge, 20 millimeter, 30 millimeter style Gatling guns like on the A-10 and the F-16. Right. I'm not really a, an expert in that field, but they were huge guns. Right. But then they developed this gun and they got the name Minigun because in comparison to those, it is quite small. But most people that are unfamiliar with the guns altogether come up to this and they get a chance to shoot it. They're like, how do you call that a minigun? Effective range for this gun is determined by the shooter. The uh, outside of a thousand meters, it's going to be very difficult to put all your rounds on a vehicle. It's going to be impossible to put them all on a vehicle from a moving helicopter. But I can effectively neutralize or destroy a vehicle quite easily. But I'm also going to put rounds in the, the general area. And I would typically say about the size of a basketball court would be the smallest area I could put them in outside of a thousand. Inside of that, on a good day, guys just, just get better and better. And there's some guys that would just put it right on every single time. It, uh, it can be used as an area weapon if you add a little dispersion by moving it, or you can just try to keep it as precise as possible to eliminate small targets. The furthest I can get these things to go, you know, a couple miles. Or I'm dealing with a 50 cal, it's also another viable weapon system. That thing's putting them out several miles no matter what I do, you know, and it, it's dissipating energy, but it's got so much in the beginning. I, I'm just putting 50 cal all over the countryside when I shoot it. And another advantage of the minigun, especially from an aerial platform, is because there's no felt recoil and the time between shots is so small, there's no movement in the, there's very little movement in the gun between each round going off. So I can aim it, shoot it, all my rounds go in the exact same spot. I shoot any other gas operated gun that's got a chugging motion, my gun's moving between each shot. Now this is a 762 by, by 51, a normal 308 Winchester round. There's uh, no options. I can push either one of my two triggers and this gun is going to operate. My motor is going to energize, my clutch is going to energize and that's going to cause my clutch to engage. The clutch turns the feeder to linker which starts pulling ammo through this feed chute box. Out of the can behind me, this can is 3,000 rounds. This can here is approximately 4,400 rounds. Along at the same time that happens, this booster motor on the can also starts dragging motor out of the, or ammo out of the can and pushing it towards the gun. Feeder delinker, delinks it, hands it to the gun. The gun shoots it, gets shot right about here in this barrel here, about the three o'clock position. It gets extracted and ejected right off this place. And here at Dillon, we save the brass, save the links. We do a lot of R&D, and that tells a story about what's going on with the gun. We're always are improving the gun. This little section of the gun right here is called a blade safing sector. And without getting into the details of what makes the gun fire, Here's six individual bolts associated with the six barrels. They pick up around, they go around the bottom of the gun. They're being forced forward because there was a roller following this elliptical cam path. When it comes to this part right here, with the old style of gun or the, the predecessor to this piece, if it was removed, that the gun was rendered safe because the bolts were never put fully in, in the battery and locked and fired but I could not pull the triggers right now because it would damage a gun because one of these rollers could come back and cause damage. So, Dylan Arrow has made the blade saving sector. I could pull triggers on this gun with a loaded feeder and empty the whole can into this thing and never fire around. And then with a motion as simple as that, now the gun is armed. What Dylan Arrow's done is made this gun so I can sit down with you within a reasonable amount of time in the course of three days I can have you set this whole gun up go shoot it induce a malfunction clear a malfunction get the gun back around and shoot it or skip the whole malfunction part and just shoot it I joined the Air Force I used to be a mechanic and then I was a flight engineer on C5s and I enjoyed all my job and I met a guy that shot these in the Air Force off of Pavehawks he's a flight engineer named Rick Nowowski and I'm, I'm like kind of interviewing for a job and I'm like so do you shoot the minigun he goes yeah I'm, I'm fully qualified and I'm like well, what's that mean? Fully qualified? How often do you shoot it? Mm, I don't know. You know, maybe not that often. Maybe 
maybe once every week or so, and I'm like, sign me up. And that was it. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm going to get to shoot the minigun. And so the, the best part of it for me is the fact that I do get to come out here on a some pretty regular basis and teach other people how to shoot this thing. It's a pleasure to shoot. It's very reliable. We shoot a plethora of ammunition around here. We've got all sorts of ammo that does all kinds of wild things, and that makes it fun, too. Thank you, Trey. For destructive power and deadly accuracy, nothing beats the Dillon Arrow minigun. For the Firearms Channel, I'm Max Martin. Thanks for watching. You're watching the Firearms Channel.com.